We're talking with Ronnie Millsap, who is in Great Falls for one of two performance, one of two performances in Montana this year, uh, in Great Falls, and then he'll go to Billings, uh, and that's going to be Tuesday night. That's right. So, Ronnie, welcome back to Montana. Well, thank you very much, Norma. It's great to be back. And, you know, all of your fans, I think a lot of us uh, would like to start back at the beginning and have you give us some idea of how you got started in the music business. I guess it goes way back to when you were very, very young. How Is did that I correct? get started? Yeah. Well, it was a long rope, and they tied it around, and they started <laughs> me up. No, but it was, it was I, I came from the heart of the Smoky Mountains, right where uh, western North Carolina meets east Tennessee is where I, where I was born. And I went to school in, uh, in Raleigh and uh, at the Governor Moorhead School for the Blind in Raleigh studying uh, academics and music, getting out of high school and going to college in Georgia, and eventually getting, uh, instead of going to law school, I wound up going to, uh, uh, to New York and making a record instead. So I came, I came out of a uh, couple of years of college and trying to decide whether I want to go to law school or go on to, to make music a career. But uh, I remember, I guess I was in high school. I came to Montana my first time. I was. Uh, 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 visiting some folks in uh, northwest uh, uh, Wyoming and we came up to uh, to Billings and uh, over to Great Falls and visited so I've, I've been uh, you know it was my first experience into into Montana mm -hmm. I think I remember being on a television station over in Thermopolis one time <laughs> Is that right? yeah now you were a musician uh, you played instruments before you became a singer is that correct well I, I've been singing as long as I can remember uh -huh. you know uh, I was I was singing long before I knew what what uh, th music theory or what harmony was did all about. Did you just teach yourself? Were you just a natural musician, or did you take a lot yeah, of lessons? Yeah, I had a, I had a, a natural ear, uh, but in in school I started studying piano when I was eight. Uh, uh, the only music I'd, I'd had any exposure to was uh, the music of the hills, mm -hmm. you know. So I started studying uh, piano at eight. I was studying violin at seven, and I was playing in the school orchestra and and, and, and from. Uh, uh, from uh, Ernest Tubb and uh, and Roy Acuff to uh, Mozart, Bach, and Beethoven. That was really a, a big transition for me. But I had many years of formal training in school, so that when I I got ready to go to, to college, uh, uh, I was on a scholarship, and I thought about going to uh, to Berkeley or some, one of the uh, good music schools and studying music. But uh, the folks who were sponsoring my education thought that I may become an entertainer <laughs> or something worse than that. So they thought maybe studying law would be better. And then your career, of course, took you all the way to the Grand Ole Opry, and you got all these wonderful awards, including the only three-time winner of the uh, Country Music Association's Male Vocalist of the Year. Yeah, I, c I came to Nashville 11 years ago, Norma, about, about 11 and a half years ago. And uh, I'd been living in Memphis before that. I'd been working in Memphis for about... Uh, uh, three and a half, four years there as a session musician playing piano uh, on other folks' records and having a chance to meet the stars. And I got a chance to be very close to Elvis at that time. I'd never met him, but I, I worked on a couple of albums with him during this period and played some parties for him. So that, I, you know, that was that was exciting. But I came to to Nashville about 11 and a half years okay. ago and started making records for RCA. I know at this point a lot of people would just love to have us stop talking and let us listen to <laughs> one of your great songs, uh, Stranger in Mind. It's a great number, uh, Ronnie, and I know one of your favorite hits. Thank you, it is. Uh, Mike Reed, the uh, writer of that, just won a Grammy for, for the song, and he's he used to play football for the Cincinnati Bengals. He's turned songwriter and lives in Nashville now. Now, I understand you have a new album coming out. It'll be out in about two weeks. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. New album called One More Try for Love, Norma, which is my 16th album on RCA. Uh -huh. And they're about, your, your crew tells you at least four numbers on that that are going to be great hits. Oh, we're excited about it. I think this is the greatest collection of songs that I've ever done as far as having uh, songs that they can use for, for singles. Mm -hmm. I think it's the, the best shot we've had. Yeah. I just have to ask you a question, Ronnie. When you're in concert, what are the images you have in your mind of the audience or what's going on out there? Since you can't see them with your eyes, what do you see with your mind in concert? You know, a lot of that depends on, uh, Norma, the, the way that the, the electricity that happens between the stage and the audience. Uh, you know, I see in my mind pretty much, I guess, probably what is out there. I, I, don't, I don't actually see their faces, see the facial expressions, or I'd probably know real quick whether I was making it or whether I was falling, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, pretty much the same thing. So my concentration, I can, 
I can uh, I can sing the words, hear everything on stage, and hear hear, hear conversations in the audiences all at the same time. And so you, you've never looked at your blindness as a handicap, no, have you? It never has been. I've been fortunate though, uh, because I had a good a good education when I was young. If I had not had that opportunity. Uh, you know, blindness could have been a handicap to me, yeah. but it isn't. I know our viewers would love to know a little bit about your personal life, your family, and you have a very fine family, I understand. Well, I have a, my wife and 14-year-old uh, son live in uh, Nashville, and during the summertime, they uh, they travel with me quite a bit, but my son's in school now, so uh, i got to keep him in there to keep those grades up. Yeah. And I, among all your interests, I understand that you're a great ham radio enthusiast. Yeah, I am. I love electronics. Uh, Norma, ham radio is a favorite hobby of mine, amateur radio. I also, to the point my electronics a hobby is to the point that I built my own recording studio about six years ago in Nashville. That's where I make all my records. Are you going to be going up someplace soon and getting a Ph.D. in ham operations or something? Is I'm going to get a, a, a law degree. <laughs> I think it is in, in, from the University of Detroit, I believe uh -huh. it is. Uh, I'm going to actually have get, get to wear the cap and gown oh. and be there. Oh, that's <laughs> terrific. <laughs> and where do you sell, see yourself going in the next five, ten years? Well, you know, I, I think it's, it's, hard, it's hard for me to say. There's so many things I haven't done. The main thing that I haven't done is I haven't become internationally as solid as I'd like to. We were in Europe last year. We're going back to do a tour of Europe this October. Uh, we're looking to uh, also put together this Australian tour we've been working on. We're working in Canada quite a bit this year. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm wanting to become more internationally, uh, more of an international artist. Mm -hmm. So that's the main focus that we're having right now, to play for audiences that we've never had the opportunity to play for. But it's a live concert that you enjoy the most? Oh, I do. Because it's it's real. It's a lot more fun. I enjoy both, but it's a lot more fun singing for people than singing for tape recorders in the studio. You know.